see that big yellow monster over there? Yeah. That's a 520 horsepower D10 bulldozer. Big as a house. Our house? Yeah. Hey, one of the workers must have left this old thermos behind. Pretty beat up. Still something in it. Yeah, gross, probably rotten, stinky chicken soup. Oh, that's not chicken soup! Oh, man, I gotta get a bigger thermos. Who, who are you? Well, looks like I got two masters this time. Pleased to meet you. Hard Hat Harry's the name, but some people call me the construction workers, Gene. I'm Max. He's Alex. We're kids. Human big kids. You living here? Do now. First 5,000 years, I lived in an old lantern. But I traded that in for this thermos. Better insulation. <laughs> oh, the outfit's changed a bit, too. <laughs> hmm, much better. You mean you're real, Genie? The kind that grants wishes and stuff? Genie Deluxe. Granter of wishes of all shapes and sizes. Nothing's too tough for Hard Hat Harry. As they say in Genie Land, your niche is my command. How many wishes do we get? Well, it used to be three, but seeing as how you're human being, kids, maybe I can throw in a couple extra. You can do really big wishes? Go ahead. Try me. All the money in the world. We have a huge wish, Hard Hat Harry. We want to see the biggest, baddest, most awesomest construction equipment there is in the whole wide world. Busting bulldozers! Well, why didn't you say so? Mm, we might have to travel a bit. Are you boys carrying your flying carpets? No. No? Oh. Well, then I'll just have to sprinkle you with some magic gravel. Here, you better put these hard hats on. Magic gravel can be a little rough on the old noggin. Okay, guys, close your eyes. Hmm. Pebbles and gravel and soil and stone. This is Hard Hat Harry, and I'm not alone. Max and Alex are here with me, and gigantic equipment is what they want to see. So give us the power to fly far, far away and show us the big stuff and show us today! Uh, wow, looks like we got the big stuff, all right. Yeah, big hole in it. That hole took months to build, Alex. And when it's done, a giant skyscraper will be built here. Big machines like bulldozers that dig up soil, rock, and sand are called excavators. You can see the front pusher blade on this dozer and the special triangular tracks, or crawler treads, that give it better traction and gripping power on dirt and mud. A single bulldozer can do the work of hundreds of men with shovels in a lot less time. Cool, a big bucket puller. That's called the track stupid. Actually, Max, your brother's partly right. That deep, upside-down shovel on a track hoe is called a bucket. It has long teeth on it to break up the ground. Watch how it digs upward toward the machine, then swings its big arm or boom around, and finally releases its load by tipping the bucket over the dumping point. It drives on track treads so it won't sink, right, Harry? Yep. Those wide, heavy tracks are slower than rubber wheels, but by spreading the weight, they're more stable on mud and loose dirt. Looks like the track holes are passing dirt to each other. Give that man a lollipop! Exactly, Alex. The dirt from the lower part of the hole is brought to a higher point by the track hose. Then the top track hose swings its huge bucket all the way around and drops the load into a waiting dump truck. That enormous bucket can hold almost a ton of dirt. Look, the bucket's almost as big as the entire dump truck. Maybe it's just a small dump truck. Hey, who's calling me small? Who said that? Whoops, I forgot to tell you, boys. When you travel with me, lots of amazing things can happen. Like construction equipment can talk, even dump trucks. Yeah, I can talk. Now, who called me small? Was it you, Pipsqueak? Uh, sorry, Mr. Dump Truck. 
Dad, what we say around here? Oh, he's just a little grouchy because he's been working so hard, Alex. Let's go over and see the truck bath. Truck bath? Big dump trucks have to go through a tire bath before they leave a construction site. That's so they won't drop rocks and chunks of packed dirt from their tires onto the roadway where they could damage cars. Safety is always the first concern on construction sites. Like wearing our hard hats, Harry? That's right, Alex. Hey, put me down, put me down. Another piece of talking equipment? Ouch, I said let me go, you big bully. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Looks like that tower crane's taking the settling torch somewhere it doesn't want to go. Wow, that tower crane can practically touch the sky. It's more than 260 feet high, Alex. It takes a day just to erect the tower itself using other smaller cranes. That cross piece is called the runway. A trolley glides along its length, hoisting up to 16,000 pounds on steel cables. That's equal to the weight of eight African elephants. Okay, down boy, down. Hey, you with the white hot hat, come over here and release these cables. Don't just stand there, do something. <laughs> hey, Harry, they're setting up the pile driver over there. What's a pile driver? Well, let's go see. Ooh. Hi, kids. Hi, Harry. Uh-oh, she's talking too. I'm Pete the pile driver. Let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, Pete, just tell us what's going on now. Oh, well, the ground men here are guiding my steel form or support cage into place, which will keep the pile from moving around when I slam into it. Piles are long, thin pieces of steel. They form a strong base or foundation for big buildings and bridges. Are you part of a crawler train? Mm, I'm attached to a crawler crane, Max. But my pile driver mechanism is like a king-size hammer. It's connected near the top of the crane's tall boom. Then the men put the pile under me and whammo! I can drive that pile six inches at a time, even into hard rock. I'm one powerful dude. Be careful, mister. Don't worry, Alex. I won't hit him. He's just getting ready to remove the hoisting belt from the pile and pull the steel form clear. Then he'll set up another pile for me to whack. It's fun. Thanks for visiting with us, Pete, and happy hitting. Anytime, Harry. And boys, if you ever want me to clobber or something for you, just stop by. Happy to help out. Thanks, Pete. Bye. Okay, guys, next stop, an auger driller. That thing weird The auger driller bores holes into the ground for well casings and pipes. Bottom part looks like a big screw. That's the screw section of the drill bit, Max, and it's huge. 16 inches across. The straight part is called the shank. It turns around and around, connected to the main machine by a strong gripping jaw called the chuck. It's like Dad's hand drill at home, but a thousand times bigger. Yep. And look how the operator sits at the side where he can monitor the machine, work the controls, and watch the drilling all at the same time. Hey, here comes my favorite part. When the drill gets clogged up with crushed rock and dirt, the operator pulls it out of the hole, swings it to the side, and by reversing the direction of the drill, presto, it's clean. Oh man, can we say that again, Harry? Sure, here's instant replay. The magic way. Then it's back into the hole where the auger can dig as far down as 60 feet deep. But we won't wait for that. Why don't the three of us go see a clam digger? That thing digs for clams? They just call it that, Alex, because the bucket opens and closes like a clamshell. What's it doing anyway? Looks like the clam digger is removing sand, silt, and mud from the access shaft of a tunnel. The ground men guide its big jaws into the center of the hole. The clam digger is attached to a crane, too. That's right, Max. Cranes have lots of uses on a construction site because they're so good at lifting heavy things to high places. Yeah, that stuff's gross. It really is messy, Alex. That's why the clam digger is such a useful tool. Mommy, where are you, Mommy? Hey, look 
look over there, it's a baby front loader. Has anyone seen my mommy? Maybe if I wave my arm, she'll see me. Oh, mommy, it's baby. I'm looking for you, mommy. Over here, honey. Mommy has to move a big boulder so we can build a road through here. Uh -uh. Don't get too close now. Someday you'll have a big six-yard bucket like mine and weigh as much as I do, more than 11 tons. But you'll have to practice maneuvering with your tires in your bucket first. Watch how Mommy lifts and lowers her bucket and scoops up all the dirt. Now run along and play with your cousin, the backhoe loader. Hi, cousin. What you doing? Hi, baby. I'm just using my backhoe here to dig a trench. Special control levers move the cylinder arms that tilt my bucket. Using a light touch, I can even push big logs out of the way with my nose. Hey, I want to try that. Why don't you follow me across this mud puddle instead? My fat tires and deep treads, I'll never get stuck. And each wheel operates independently, so my tires can even lift off the ground, and I'll still move forward. <laughs> That's a funny trick, cousin. Backhoe front loader machines like me are found on every construction site, because we're so versatile, fast, and maneuverable. Hey, you kids over there, want to climb into my driver's seat? All right, yeah! The driver's compartment, or cab, rotates in a complete circle, so the driver can use my bucket end or my shovel end in seconds. And just like the baby's mama, my front shovel can push or carry lots of dirt in one gulp. Whoops, looks like some real loose soil ahead. You kids better jump out. I might start spinning my wheels. That BB front loader is so cute. <laughs> yeah, and he looks like he's a fast learner, too. Hey, let's go take a look at the forklift over there. Did it lift the forks? <laughs> Uh-oh, nobody's driving that thing. The driver's on the other side, Max, under that steel cage that protects him from falling debris. Here he comes now. The driver moves the machine as close to the drop point as he can. Then he extends or telescopes the long fork arm as much as 40 feet. The wooden planks are sitting on the two long forks, and the ground man uses hand signals to help the driver position the load. Gently now, fellas. Harry, I think the driver wants to talk to us. Gosh darn it, I just realized I forgot my lunch. Let's get out of here, guys. We don't want to hang around with a hungry construction worker on the loose. We can hide near those backhoes over there. Hey, boys, where'd you go? Oh, I turned my back on those kids for two seconds and they're gone. Alex. Max, don't be running around here without me, though. I get the side. I get, I get the best. Side. No, I get the better. Man, I wish I could live here. Aha! Found yeah, you. Come on out of there, boys. I want to show you some off-road dump trucks. I saw an off-road dump truck in a book once that had eight-foot-high tires. It's true. Those are some of the biggest trucks on Earth and can carry up to 240 tons. They're not allowed to travel on highways because their heavy weight could crack the pavement. This one here has wheels as tall as you, Max, and the rear bed or dump box can hold 38 tons or 76,000 pounds. And once he dumps his load, that monster bulldozer comes in to make the ground flat and level for the builders. That's called grading. Max, you've got some real smart brains under that hard hat. But can you guys tell me how wide that front pusher blade is? As wide as a car? Close, Alex. It's 12 feet across, and the dozer's rugged diesel engine packs a walloping 285 horsepower. Hey, I have an idea. 
Let's go sit in the cab of that big bulldozer parked over there. Hey, Harry, can you drive this thing? Sure. Uh. All right. Let's go, boys. OK, I'll show you how this thing is done. See out there? This is where we're going. Okay, there you go. Down. Down. And then there it is. Yeah. Oh. All right. Can you drive? Yeah? Let's see if you can that Okay, fellas, aim for that mountain of dirt straight ahead. Now, let's park by the dirty dump truck. That dump truck has a steel bed extender to keep rocks from falling on the driver's cab. Right again for 500 points and a trip to Disneyland. And I recognize that thing. It's another heavy-duty track haul. Amazing! We now have two winners for the Disneyland Dream Vacation. But can anyone tell me the name of the mechanical part that tilts the bucket up and down? <coughs> Time's up! It's called a tilt cylinder, and now I go to Disneyland! Yay for me! You're crazy, hard hat Harry. Oh, oh, watch this! When the truck bed is full, the track hoe operator taps the load with his bucket to let the dump truck know it's okay to pull away. No way! That's cool! You know, dump trucks move too slow for me. You boys don't mind if I just speed things up a little bit, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, now I think it's time to see something really concrete. I give up. What is it? I'm a concrete pumper, friend. Once my 110-foot boom is fully extended using that remote control unit, I'm going to pump concrete. It takes almost 15 minutes just to unfold my boom, which holds the pumping hose. Those four large legs sticking out from my truck are called outriggers. I use them for stability so I won't tip over when I'm pumping. Here comes a ready-mixed concrete truck. It's about time, because that's where I'm going to get my concrete from. Where you been, sister? Oh, just spinning along. I'm going to pull up close enough to pour my pre-mixed concrete into your rear hamper. Watch my chute come out. Ready, aim, fire! Concrete is made from sand, gravel, water and cement. I mixed the concrete together while I was driving over here, simply by spinning the thick mixture in my colorful barrel-shaped drum. My drum never stops turning. So the concrete goes from the ready-mixed truck into the pumper's hamper and then gets pumped through the hose connected to the boom over to those men building that wall across the field. You got it, Max. Then the concrete worker pulls my snaking hose along the wooden mold and positions the hose exactly where he needs the concrete. When he gives me the signal, I take a deep breath and blow that concrete out at a stupendous rate of 70 cubic yards an hour. That's fast. When will the concrete on the new wall be dry, Mr. Pumper? It'll be hard enough to walk on in just four hours. But it takes almost 28 days for concrete to dry rock solid. Which reminds me of our next piece of equipment, boys. A noisy beast that specializes in breaking things that are rock solid. It's called an impact hammer. Okay, pal. Climb up here. And don't forget to wipe off your boots first. I don't want any dirt on the floor of my new cab. Good. Now get in. This impact hammer is a tough guy. Now, let's see. Where's a nice hard piece of rock that I can pulverize? Hmm. Oh, there's one. The impact hammer is connected to a track hoe. It takes two men to attach the long pointed impact bit, which is made of super strong hardened steel. At the end of the day, that guy's brains must be pulverized, too. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet he gets rattled pretty good. A big impact hammer can smash through tons of rocks in minutes. But you know, there's an even faster, noisier, and messier way to break up rock. How would you like to see some real-life blasting? Hot dog! 
Oh, yeah! Now, before any blasting can take place, these odd-looking machines called crawler drills bore small holes in the rock just wide enough for a stick of dynamite and a blasting agent to fit through. That white powder you see blowing around is actually finely crushed rock. Mr. That's dynamite! It's okay, Alex. It's not dangerous until he attaches a wire to the top and sends an electrical current to the blasting kit. Right. But first, he drops the dynamite into the hole along with a special white blasting gel and packs it all down tight. When everybody's at least 500 feet away, it's showtime! Awesome, I've got to see that again. Yeah, please, Harry. Another big bang coming right up. Five, four, three, two, one. And after the blast is passed, you got to clean up the mess. The front end loader and the track hoe can handle that job, preparing the area for a new roadway. Hey, that reminds me how you forgot to show us big road making equipment. No, just saving the best for last. Let's go! Now, who can tell me what this snail paste piece of road machinery is called? Looks like a snow melter to me. But that's not snow, it's lime. This road reclaimer, soil stabilizer machine, adds white lime to soil to make it hard as rock for the paver. That's called soil stabilizing. It can also gobble up old broken asphalt and lay down a fresh road base ready for the compacting machines. That's called road reclaiming. That road reclaimer has really gigantic tires. And that strange machine has a metal tire in the front. Tire? That's my compacted drum. Oh, not again. And it's a girl. I'm Carla, the compactor, Sonny. My grandmother was called a steamroller, but compactor suits me better. It's my job to compress the soil so it's solid for the paper. You must well not, Carla. It's all muscle, Alex. But here's a little secret. My drum has a vibration unit inside so I can compact soil using impact or percussion, not just sheer weight. Wow, Carla, you're a cool compactor. Just doing my job, Alex. It's time to see a big rig, guys. Super heavy machines are carried to their jobs by low bed trailers, also called gooseneck trailers. Some of these trailer trucks have 24 wheels and carry 126 tons. They ride just 12 inches off the ground, making it easy for big machines to climb aboard. Whoa, that machine looks like something from Star Wars. And it's being driven by Darth Vader. Correction, Jedi Masters. I'm called the Pavement Profiler. I creep slowly along on my three tracks, eating up old asphalt. And spitting it out, my long conveyor belt, into bottom drop dump trucks. It takes two people to control me. One on my back and one on the ground. With my 264 tungsten carbide teeth, I can cut a path up to 16 feet wide and 15 inches deep. No one can stop me either, because I weigh 148,000 pounds. And when I'm done gobbling up miles of roadway, my friend, the paver, steps in. His voice was kind of scary. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's always trying to scare little kids. Stick with me, I'm a paver spreader. Watch this, I'm gonna splash some wet concrete on that bossy guy over there. Got some in his hair, on his shirt, and pants too. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, back to work. The wet concrete is poured into my hopper, and then... I pick it up and pull it into my huge spreader part. Or a dump truck and spread some concrete in front of my paver part. And then away I go. That there's called my oscillating float finisher. 
I use it to smooth over the new roadway. You know, I can even lay down a 30-inch slab of concrete if I want to. 50 feet wide. And I'm always right behind you, paver. I'm a texturing machine. My long, round comb rusts up the new road surface, so it won't be too smooth and slippery when cars drive over. Why don't you boys take a minute to test out my work? Uh, no thanks. We were just leaving to see that bridge construction over there. Besides, I'd rather see a big crawler crane lift a huge steel girder. Me too! You saw crawler cranes like this one earlier today. At the top, it has a 40-foot boom extension called the jib, and there's another 180 feet of boom below that. Without breaking a sweat, this crane can lift more than 250 tons. Wow, that's like three of those huge profiler machines at one time. Now the workers use a sturdy grapple hook, or block, on the end of the crane cable to secure the girder for lifting. Shouldn't the crane operator have his hard hat on? Hey, mister, put on your hard hat. Yeah, you! I think he's concentrating on easing that girder into place, Alex. Maybe you could remind him about his hard hat later on. I'm getting hungry. Isn't there any food around here? Sure, there's a lunch wagon on the construction site. That's where the workers buy their coffee, donuts, and snacks. Look, that nice lady's waving to us. Ask her if I can have a bite of her sandwich. Harry, can we go see that other crane on top of the bridge? Oh, yeah. Looks like they're laying down long steel support rods. Hear that beeping sound? It's a warning to let you know the crane is backing up in your direction. All construction equipment, even delivery trucks, make that beeping noise when they shift into reverse gear. What kind of crane is that? It's a rough terrain crane. Double show off. And remember what those are called? Outriggers? Stabilizers! You're both right. Those outriggers will stabilize the crane while it hoists those steel rods. The hydraulic feet actually lift the wheels of the crane 12 inches off the ground. Once the groundmen attach the hoisting hook to the load, the crane operator takes over. His crane can lift over 35 tons. That's only a seventh of what the crawler crane can pick up. Hey, kid, you calling me a sissy? Oops, a sensitive crane. Look, that crawler crane might be a little stronger than I am, but I can get into small spaces the crawler would never think of squeezing into. And my boom has three extensions that reach 125 feet from the cab. Not every crane can do that. I tell you, I get no respect around here. I break my boom all day, lifting and lugging, lifting and lugging. And all I hear are put downs. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. If it weren't for me, this darn highway would never get built. Uh, looks like they're just finishing up over here, boys. Why don't we move on to the wackiest, wildest machine of them all? It's... it's... what is it? That's a very unusual piece of equipment called a barrier mover, Alex. It sucks up those concrete barriers and shifts them from lane to lane, helping to keep traffic running smoothly during road construction. The barrier mover is turning that one-lane highway into a two-lane highway in seconds! That's so wicked! What do we see next, Harry? What you see next, Max, is your own front door. I gotta get you boys home before your mom and dad start worrying. Oh, please, oh, please Harry, Harry, just, just one, one more. more. Please, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, well, all right. Just one. Let's see if I can snap up something really exciting. Not this exciting. Hang on, boys. We're out of here. That was the coolest. <clears throat> yeah, we were nearly blown to smithereens. Oh, uh, sorry about that, guys. I'm still a little rusty on my time travel. 
Um, uh, which one of those monster machines were your favorites? I like the bulldozers, the highway paper, and that humongous dump truck. Wonder what Dad would say if I pulled into the driveway in one of those. <laughs> I like I like the twirling concrete mixer, the baby loader, and that weird barrier mover. Personally, I like that noisy pile driver. Reminded me of this old stone hammer I once owned in Egypt. Hey, did I ever tell you guys about my first construction job? No. I was working for this guy named Pharaoh, building these pointy things called the Great Pyramids. Well, I had to stack these stones on top of each other and no one could figure out how to do it. Well, being a construction genie, I knew a trick or two. So I went over to the Pharaoh and I told him that the best thing was <sighs> hey, Max, could you tuck me in? Sure, Alex. Boy, that was really neat today with Hard Hat Harry, huh? All that flying around and talking to those monster machines and stuff. It was awesome. You know, I don't think Mom and Dad believed us about Harry. Yeah, sometimes grown-ups are kind of weird that way. You tell them all about the cool magic stuff that happens to you, and they just stare at you like you're crazy. But it happened, right? It happened, Alex. It was real. Hey, Max, you know what the best part is? What's that? <laughs> we still got a whole bunch of wishes left. <laughs> yeah.